Hello cookbook friends, this is Carrie with Cookbook Divas, and today we're going to look through Paola Bacchia's Istria cookbook. It is recipes and stories from the hidden heart of Italy, Slovenia, and Croatia. Gorgeous cookbook cover, see how it's gilt and shiny in the back. Okay, Istria is the heart-shaped promontory on the northern crux of the Adriatic Sea where rows of vines and olives grow in fields of red earth. Here, the cuisine records a history of changing borders, a blend of the countries, Italy, the Republic of Venice, Austria, Hungary, and now Slovenia and Croatia, that have shared Istria's hills and coasts and valleys. Okay, I'm excited to check it out. I love that the ends of the pages are dyed blue. That's so cool. So this came out, I think, well... It's Smith Street Books, and here's a map, and let's check out the table of contents. We start off with soups, and then antipasti, pasta, gnocchi, and risotto, savory pies, strudels, and crepes. Aha, there's the Austrian influence. Land and sea, and then a chapter on vegetables, a chapter on cakes and desserts, biscuits to serve with tea or coffee, and then we finish with sauces, preserves, and infusions introduction where we're going to learn about Istria and all those countries and the food traditions. I'm going to read that later. A note on names and spellings, historical notes. Let me read just the first paragraph of that for us because we kind of it'll help us enjoy the rest of the cookbook look through if we have a little bit of background. This says Istria has been a country of many cultures living side by side for over a thousand years. For some 500 years, the western and southern parts of the Istrian Peninsula were governed by the Republic of Venice. And the eastern part, which was referred to as Imperial Istria, excuse me, Imperial Istria, was ruled by Austria. With the rise of Napoleon and for most of the 1800s, the entire peninsula and its surrounds were part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire under the rule of the Habsburgs. And then after World War I, it formed the Italian region of Venezia Siulia, and after World War II, these areas were assigned to Yugoslavia until its collapse in the early 1990s. Istria is now split between Croatia and Slovenia with a narrow northern strip around the fishing village of Mugia, which is part of Italy. After Croatians and Slovenes, Italians are the most populous ethnic group of Istria. Okay. Soups chapter. First recipe of the book, lentil and barley soup. It looks amazing, and I have lentils in the house. I don't have... Maybe I have barley. I could make this. Mm. Livia's bean and sauerkraut soup. Some travel photos. Summer tomato soup. Yum. Zucchini and rice soup. And I better get out of the soup chapter, because it's not fair to show you the whole book. Roasted fennel soup. Appetizers chapter. Baked tomatoes with Parmesan, garlic, and parsley. That sounds so good, and it can't be that difficult to make. It's brilliant. Sometimes I don't even check the recipe. I like cookbooks just for the idea of, yes, I could make that for dinner tonight. Spinach, quote-unquote, meatballs. They don't actually have meat in them. Hazelnut cheese biscuits. How good does that sound? Ooh, yum. Crumbed eggplant. I will drop everything and everyone and everything and travel the world. Little info that I'll read later. Ricotta spread with paprika. I have ricotta in the house and I have lots of paprika. I'm very tempted. So that's appetizers. And I was thinking, I I want to have a bubbles party in my backyard because I'm still not hosting in my house because the pandemic. I'd love to serve these polenta wedges with bubbles. That would be fun. Stuffed sardines. And here is asparagus prosciutto wraps, and then the insert page called She Shed Many Tears for the Loss of Her Hometown. Mm. Baked mussels. Now we're in the pasta chapter. Yay! Here is fusi with peas, tomatoes, and cinnamon. I wonder if fusi is a different type of fusilli? I don't know. Ravioli with greens. Ooh, here's oh, 
Onorina's Crawfee with Ricotta. It's someone's grandmother. Spaghetti with Mussels. A get-together invariably involved card games. Oh, I'm looking forward to reading these pages. Semolina Gnocchi in Broth. Now, I don't usually make gnocchi because it's so much work. Do you? Baked gnocchi with taleggio and truffle. So after you make the gnocchi, you still have more steps you have to bake it. Ah! Black gnocchi with calamari. Hmm. Potato dumplings with cherries, orange, and cinnamon. I better get to the next chapter. Savory pies, strudels, and crepes. I love savory pies. What do you have for me? The first recipe, and I don't see a picture. Oh, I do see a picture. Pasta strudel with peas and pancetta. That looks good. I stop to buy a handful of cherries and a velvety apricot. I think it's going to be a market reminiscence. Strudel with greens and potatoes. And a photo of a church. Spiced cheese strudel. How good is that? Ooh. Silver beet and cauliflower vegetable pie. I don't know what a silver beet is. Is it a beet? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look that up. Um... Crepe stack with spinach, ham, and blue cheese. I love savory crepes. Crepe cano cannelloni with radicchio and blue cheese. Wow. This is something you're never going to see on a restaurant menu here in America, so we just have to make it ourselves. Land and sea chapter. Cabbage rolls. Oven roasted stuffed banana peppers from the land. Chicken with roasted peppers and dappled sunlight photograph. Interesting choice. Beef and pork goulash with sauerkraut. I figured there'd be a goulash recipe in here. Stuffed little meat rolls. Pork and pancetta skewers. Alice's meatballs. I'll let you drool over that for a second. Pan-cooked cabbage with potatoes, speck, and sausage. I'm not much of a cabbage cooker, but I should be. As a vegetarian, I should make cabbage. Clum crumbed flathead fish, I guess, with pecorino and parsley. Oh, fruit trees. I like pictures like that in winter. Slow cooked sardines, steamed snapper. Braised cuttlefish with peas and cinnamon. There's a lot of cinnamon in this cookbook. Vegetables chapter, going to be my favorite. Silver beet and potato bake with roasted cherry tomatoes. i got to figure out what silver beet is. Mushroom, potato, and onion bake. Smashed potatoes with onion and olive oil. Braised zucchini with, you guessed it, cinnamon. Yum! Unfortunately, I'm personally allergic to cinnamon, but it tastes good, but it hurts. Braised peas and fennel. Fresh borlotti beans in a salad. Yeah, I don't know how to use borlotti beans, so I've stopped buying them. I need to learn. Ooh, the cake and dessert chapter. I'm only going to show you a couple. Okay, there's a cake, because I don't want to ruin the whole chapter for you. Sweet Easter bread. And how about a Hungarian layer cake? Okay. Ooh, but I want to show you this too. Plum cake with a streusel topping. I'm not a fan of these sunlight dappled pictures. I'd like to see it more clearly. Mm. But I love the vintage dishes that they're using for their prop photography. <gasps> Crepes with cherries, orange, and yet again cinnamon. So if you're going to get this cookbook, Load up on some cinnamon for your pantry. You're going to need it. Sweet yellow polenta biscuits. Nice. Oh, these are the biscuits for with your coffee and tea. These are Istrian wedding biscuits. Look at that shape. That's unusual. And what else? Some donuts. Sauces, preserves, and infusions. Roasted pepper sauce. Bechamel sauce. Sun preserved sour cherries. Yum. There was a lot of good stuff in this cookbook. I hope you enjoyed this cookbook look through. Be sure to drop a like and a comment if you did. And you can find more of our cookbook reviews at the cookbookdivas.com blog. We talk about cookbooks on our podcast and we post cookbook news and info and photos to Instagram and Facebook and of course videos to YouTube. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.